watch the great testimony of the saints. I love him. You just don't know what he's done for me. But among the many things he's done, he's given me the victory. We welcome you today to Act Two of the Celebration of Life for Sister Velvelverly Johnson. We thank the Lord for the way he manifested himself in her, to her, and through her. And we're going to celebrate that together. We thank God for her daughter, Patrice, who has impacted the, the culture, the character, and the overall ministry of the People's Community Baptist Church during her years here. And so we have representation from various ministries to communicate that as well. Among those is our music ministry, which has come out in strong form today because we want to help her celebrate. We want to help her push through this season in her life. We're delighted to see her family members with her and other friends who've come to support. So we're going to move forward with Act 2 now. I'm going to offer a brief word of prayer. After I offer that prayer, we're going to receive reflections as words of affection from our tribal leaders here, Deacon Herb Edwards representing the Gad family, and then Sister Ethel Lawhorn will offer expressions on behalf of the entire church family and any other special cards or resolutions or acknowledgments that have been handed to her. Then we will follow the flow of service as um, Vertrice has outlined it for us. And we will be blessed by all of these wonderful reflections and memories to help those who do not have a chance to know Sister Zev to get a better picture of who she is, who the Lord designed her to be, and, and why this warrants two acts of celebration. Our music ministry will serve. Our Minister Timothy High will bring forth the scriptures. Minister Tompkins will pray. We'll have a, another selection by the music ministry, then we'll return after that. So let's be blessed. Let's stay engaged in, in what is taking place in this time of celebration, in this time of worship. You hear something that warrants an amen, say it. You hear something that warrants our applause, go ahead and clap. If you feel like you just want to laugh, feel like you just want to shout, if you feel like you want to make some audible contribution from where you are, just go ahead and, and say it. Say, yes, ma'am. Say, yes, sir. Say, amen. Say, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's make it participatory celebration. Amen. Amen. To those who are worshiping with us by way of live stream, we thank God for you. We pray that you also will be ministered to and blessed by the life celebration that takes place in this place. Join me in prayer, if you will. Father, we come before you because we recognize that you are God and you are the reason that we even exist. We recognize that, if, that because of you, we've come to know one another. You have ordered our steps you have orchestrated our lives so that they have intersected and intertwined in such a way that we sorrow with those who sorrow, we celebrate with those who celebrate. We thank you for Sister Vev. Thank you for her life. Thank you for her witness. We thank you for the fruit of her loins. We thank you so very much for the opportunity to come together today and in celebrating her to celebrate you. We pray that you would guide us even today as much as you've guided Yvonne and, and Vertrice in their designing of this service. We're trusting you, Lord, to breathe freshly upon it and do what you want to do, do what you need to do in order that you might impact us in such a way by the reflection upon how you used her life that it will affect the way that we live the balance of our lives. 
We want you to be uplifted and exalted while we celebrate your daughter, Vervevoli. Now take us forward in the power of your Holy Spirit for the advancement of your kingdom. We pray for peace in this family. We pray for comfort for the family. We pray for healing. We pray for strength, all of the resources that you are able to provide. And if there are any among us today who've come because they know family and they know they knew Vev, but they don't know you, we pray that during this service, you will say something, you will do something, you will manifest yourself in such a way that they too will desire and decide to join the family of believers. We pray this in the strong name of him who was dead, but is now alive, Jesus, the risen Christ. Let the church say amen. Amen. Deacon Herb Edwards will follow. Good morning, all. I greet you in the strong name of Jesus Christ, who is the source of my salvation. I am Deacon Herb Edwards, one of the three deacons assigned to the Gad tribal family. The other two are Deacon Marvin Allen and Deacon Martin Pitts. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the tribal configuration of the People's Community Baptist Church, we use nine of the 12 tribes. The names of which are the sons of Israel to create families with the goal of improving upon communication so no one gets lost in such a large congregation. We have assembled to celebrate the life of Verville Verily Johnson the beloved mother of our very own Vertrice Talaferro. Boy, they got some hard names. It's like reading the first chapter of the book of First Chronicles. Matter of fact, I think I'll exercise a deacon prerogative and use her nickname, Vev, for the balance of my presentation. I did not know Vev personally, but after having been introduced vicariously through various commentaries and obituaries, it is clear that my loss is the gain of all those who encountered her in life. I am confident that I shall have the opportunity to correct this inequity when we meet in the hereafter. You see, even without earthly encounter, I have found evidence that her life will be rewarded with one of those mansions Jesus promised to prepare for the righteous in eternity. I did not know about you, but I have long since applied for one of those mansions for myself. And though I am in no hurry to take possession of my property, I plan to have an opportunity to meet her in that neighborhood one day. Other than the aforementioned methods of discerning and predicting the salvation status of Vev, I have found other reliable evidence of her earthly reward. Have you ever heard the axiom, the acorn doesn't fall too far from the tree? Or some say the apple. It's a rhetorical question because I know you've heard it before. Well, as cliche as it might be, I regard it as truth in most cases. And the truth is manifest in the life of her daughter our very own Vertrice Talia Farrow. 
You see, she shows up as a Bible student in the Chancellor Choir, in missions ministries, in women's ministries, in trustee ministry, and on and on. She just so happens to be a member of that Gad tribal family I told you about earlier. There is certainly sufficient evidence of Vertrice's diligent pursuit of her personal salvation and proof of my assertion that the acorn does not fall far from the tree. Most assuredly, the Johnson, Talia Farrow, and other related progenies and families and friends will mourn this loss because clearly this was a great lady who had impact on many. So mourn at your pace. But remember that according to the scripture, and this is borne out by my own experience, because I have endured many painful losses, joy does come in the morning. I cannot say it will be tomorrow morning, but for those of us who know and only rely upon our relationship with Jesus, we can promise you that one morning, joy will return. I am honored to have the opportunity to stand and share a tribute on behalf of the Gad family. I entreat and encourage these families to call upon us, the Gad family and the People's Community Baptist Church, as you process your loss. We stand ready to assist in any way and to offer you safe haven in your hour of need. May God wrap you in his tender embrace and grant you peace. And God bless you all. Good morning to Pastor Robinson, First Lady, clergy, officers, and to the family. Know that we are here for you. We love you, and anything that we can do, know that we are here. First, I will be reading expressions of condolences to the family of Vera Johnson. In love and memory of Aunt Vera, as we gather to honor the life of Aunt Vera, we celebrate not only the woman she was, but also the remarkable role she played in our lives. Aunt Veb was the embodiment of joy, laughter, bondless energy. She was our fun aunt. The one who turned ordinary moments into unforgettable adventures. Her playful spirit enrolled our lives in countless ways from impromptu dance parties to spontaneous outings, Aunt Veb infused every gathering with her infectious enthusiasm. But beyond the laughter and the adventures, Aunt Veb was a source of unwavering support and unconditional love. She was the one who turned to for comfort, guidance, and a shoulder to lean on. As we bid farewell to our beloved fun aunt, let us carry forward every legacy of laughter, love, and spontane some spontaneity. Though she may no longer be with us in person, her spirit will continue to brighten our lives and inspire us to live each day to the fullest with heartfelt memories and eternal gratitude, love always, Danielle, Houston, Texas. With deepest sympathy, the Salisbury University Illuminate Office was so very sorry to hear of the loss of your mom recently. Sending our condolences as this time to you and your family, Salisbury University, Maryland. In memory of your mother, how beautiful is a mother's love how blessed are the lives it touches. 
dear V, may you know in your heart that the gifts your mother gave you are yours forever. Her laughter, her words of wisdom, the memories you created with each other, and always her love. Expressions of condolences again. Hope it comforts you to remember just how wonderful your mother was with deepest sympathy. Reverend Dr. Gerald and Denise Robeson and family. Maryland Gen General Assembly in memory be it hereby known to that our sincere sympathy is extended to the family of Ms. Verbell Verley View A. Johnson a devoted mother Ms. V truly let her light shine a woman of faith and a woman of action with a servant's heart she dedicated many years as a Maryland State employee. May the comfort and peace of God keep you. Presented on this 11th day of March, 2024, Delegate Cherise Sample Hughes. The People's Community Baptist Church. The church resolution of the family of Verbell Verley A. Johnson. Whereas Beverly Verley A. Johnson departed from this earth for another land, a city which have foundation whose builder and maker is God. And that's stated in Hebrews 11:10. Whereas the world has lost a faithful servant in the passing of Sister V. We rejoice that her belief in the promise of God stated in Psalm 7 to 3, 24 is fulfilled. In the state, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me today in glory. We further rejoice in the knowledge that she believed God's word and followed his guidance, seeking his leadership in all that she said and did. Whereas the Apostle Paul reminds us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's stated in 2 Corinthians 5, 8. And that a crown of righteousness awaits those who have fought the good fight, kept the faith, and finished their course. 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8. And now, therefore, be it resolved on this fourth day of April 2024 that we expressed to Sister Vernice and all family and friends who grieve our deepest sympathy and remind them that their loss is these gain because Jesus, our great high priest, is well acquainted with our struggles and sorrows. And he says to each of you today, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Stated in Matthew eleven twenty eight, He also promises, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Stated in John 14, 8, 18. We would sincerely pray that you will find rest and comfort, not only in today, but forever. Done by the order of the People's Community Baptist Church, Dr. Haywood A. Robinson III, pastor at the Law Hunt Church Clerk. May God be with you. Know that we love you and we are here for you.
morning. All praise to God. Pastor, thank you. Thank you for your words uh, in Salisbury. Um, I did pass on your hellos to uh, Pastor Wesley, Howard John Wesley. And he said hello to you. Uh, <clears throat> I had my phone. I don't have it, but I had um, one or two look up scriptures and, and, and things in reference to the uh, speaking. And, and I looked up um, loss of a mother in the Bible and I Googled that and a whole lot of 50 or so things came up. And then I Googled um, women in the Bible. And about 5,000 things came up in reference. But it's all about uh, what God is to each of us, the peace and the power during the devastation of a loss. So anyway, I want to um, say a few things. Um, I would want to say what she would want me to say, and maybe some things she probably wouldn't want me to say. <clears throat> but... Um, I'm, I'm just been moved by the, the acorn and the, the apple falling from the tree. So her apple, her tree was her mother, Alberta Johnson. And I don't know how many people are familiar with um, Southeast Washington, D.C., Anacostia, Conway Heights, and Berry Farms and all those places. But her mother was prominent back in D.C., back in the day real prominent and she didn't fall too far from that tree um, we were teenagers and like I had mentioned before in Salisbury uh, we did what teenagers did and what we did what teenagers weren't supposed to do as a direct result of that a child was born Retrice Johnson Tallaferro uh, all right, Tallaferro comes from an uh, Italian word, means cut iron. And that's the T in Booker T. Washington, for those who don't know. That's what the T stands in Booker T. Washington. Anyway, I'm Curtis Tallaferro. I'm her, her father. And um, I was last here <clears throat> for my father's funeral years ago. And this church represented the word community. It, it showed up and it was very supportive then like it is now and I just wanted y'all to know that I really appreciate everybody who's been surrounded my daughter and, and been here and one young lady told me she's the heart of, uh, of this church and part of the, the heartbeat of everything so I just want to thank everybody for that supporting my daughter <clears throat> but anyway um, I would want to say that um, what happens when a irresponsible boy, teenager, hits a girl pregnant, and her mother is Alberta Johnson? Um, what you do is you go to high school at night, and you get a job, and you do what you got to do, because her mother didn't play, and she wound up not playing. And um, yes, yeah, she wound up not playing. She raised a daughter who loved her and a daughter who has a relationship with God. And, and that's the reason why I'm standing here. You know, I always, I have, she has um, two brothers and another sister. And I try to raise men, you know, with my sons. And I, I, I say, I'm a man. I'm a son of a man. But I'm a son of a woman. And my genesis as a man started with, with Evelyn Johnson. And I had to man up and do what I was supposed to do. She was a wonderful mother who loved her daughter. Our relationships didn't transcend into adulthood 
but we remain friends. And up until recently, we would text and talk. And some, most of the things she would tell me not to tell Teresa when we talked about things. And, you know, I guess she didn't want her to close up or some things, but we would talk and text until a few months ago. And um, it's good to have that relationship with people because you have a relationship with God. And that's the reason why I'm standing here. Like I said, my man who had started in, I um, worked in jails, police the streets of D.C. and everything, and my man who had started with her and her mother, my mother and my father. So I'm just thankful for being able to have her being in my life, in my world. I'm, I'm blessed to, to know God. I'm blessed to have a daughter who has a relationship with God and a part of this church. I, it, it's been years since I've been here. My, when my father was laying here in, in the coffin and uh, we had a repast here also back then. So, I mean, this church is, is good. So anyway, I want to thank the pastor for his words. And uh, yeah, I got a best dressed man here too also. But anyway, uh, I thank everybody who support my daughter. Thank you very much. She treated me like her son. I mean, when she wanted to go on them trips, she would call me. Can you come and watch the house for me? Can you take care of my car for me? I said, sure, I'll do whatever I can do for you. Because she brought me up. I seen one of them pictures, her first car. I never did get to drive that car. I never did, because I was too young. And by my calculations, she was only eight years older than me. So we basically, I watched her come up. Another picture popped up. When she was standing there in that blue, I remember that. That was where our house was on Palmway Road. We used to, me and my little sister, we used to stay with our grandmother. We used to, a lot, a lot. Where my aunt, had took care of us too. She washed us, she fed us, she taught us things. Like when it snowed, she taught us how to make ice cream out of snow or make sugar cookies. Yeah, we, we had a nice time in there. When we had a four bedroom house we lived in a four-bedroom house, and she had her room, but she moved out. She moved out. Her and Curtis and then Tracy came along. So she moved out, and we moved into her room, me and my uncle. <laughs> we put that pool table in her room, <laughs> and we were shooting pool all night long. We, we just shoot pool. We bust up the fish tank and everything. Wow. And then some time passed, some time passed. And um, I think she moved on 3rd Street. And we all lived on 3rd Street. We, I had an aunt down one end and an aunt down the other end. We was down on 3rd Street. And then Tracy came along. And then we was just having a nice time, nice time. And some of the things she... Um, we moved away, and we came back together. And then uh, she moved to the Northeast. Tracy was getting bigger and bigger. 
And um, I used to take her, drop them off at home, let her do her studies. I'd take the car and i go about my business. The gas was cheap back then. It was like a dollar. Wow, I could drive anywhere. But I had the car. She gave me the car. She, she trusted me. She trusted me. And I appreciate that. Because she made me responsible. I couldn't tear up her car. I had to take care of it. So I, I took care of it. I went home. I did what I said I was going to do. And came back, pick her up, take her to work. And she got me my first job. Well, I wouldn't say my first job. No, she got me a good job. <laughs> it was with the state of Merlin, <laughs> where she worked at. She, she took me out there and got me out there. And I, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a lot she did for me. It was a lot. And I really appreciate y'all letting me share some of my memories. It, it goes, them pictures, some pictures, well, they gone, man. But um, it was, when I seen the pictures, I said, oh, yeah, I was there. I was there. Yeah. It was a nice time. And, and she installed a lot of responsibility in me to, take, to do the right thing, to try to do the right thing. And um, we did pretty good. And she did, she did wonders with my little cousin because she brought her up. And I, I seen her a lot. They were family. They family. It's all family. I appreciate y'all letting me share this. And Curtis, good seeing you. He used to call me bad boy. <laughs> he used to call me bad boy all the time. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Jackson, and I like to say that I am the Beverly's best friend ever. I believe that. I consider myself to be blessed to have been gifted with the unparalleled friendship of the Beverly Johnson. Ours was a rare and precious friendship indeed. I'm not sure what I did to deserve such an honor, but God granted it nonetheless. And I am so grateful for it. Vev's was a beautiful soul, a luminescent spirit that reached out and captivated those around her. Intellect and talent defined her and made her much sought after and very successful in her career. Her God-given humor, generosity, and classiness drew people to her, but it was her genuine love and ability to accept everyone that made them stay. Vev was the kind of person who was a friend for life. Not everyone could appreciate her uniqueness, but those of us who did were the recipients of something truly special. For Beverly loved deeply and was generous to a fault. She shared freely with her family and her community. Her legacy of love and generosity was adopted by her beautiful and accomplished daughter, Bertrice whom I love dearly. Her family was her life, and nothing was too much or too good for them. She cherished them. Family, especially her great nieces and great nephews. As time goes on, if you remember nothing else at all about Vervevely, remember that she loved each of you unequivocally. Honor her memory by learning to love unconditionally as she loved. Let the legacy of love and generosity inform your decisions and dictate your actions towards and your relationships with others. Vev and I shared many similarities, which formed the basis for our friendship. We were both born in 1953 into families of eight siblings, many with outsized personalities. As you can imagine, our homes were virtual hives of activity. There was always a lot going on. Both of our families had seven girls and one boy who was the youngest. 
We both had VJ as our initials and first names that nobody else had at that time. We both idolized our mothers and to an extent became them as we matured. Many people knew Vev as having a larger than life personality, vocal, always laughing, always joking, always the life of any gathering. Although I knew that side of her, I also got to know a side that she may not have revealed as often. There were times when she was quiet, pensive, and deeply self-reflective. In those moments, I felt that I was seeing to the heart of the real Vivevelyn. We sometimes talked for hours on end, sharing stories about our childhood experiences, how we fit into our families, and sometimes about how things made us feel. We talked endlessly about our relationships and our walk with Christ Jesus. We discovered that we both at times secretly wished that we could escape notice, disappear in a crowd, steal away to a quiet place without being noticed, with no fanfare. Well, on February the 21st, 2024, while sitting in plain sight in a very public forum, Vev did just that. She quietly and unobtrusively slipped away to be with her Lord. If you all would indulge me, I would like to honor that exit with a song. It'll be brief. Steal away. Steal away. Steal away to Jesus. Steal.
Bev, I'll meet you on the other side. I need to first preface this by saying that I um, have bronchitis a few weeks ago and I'm still recovering from the remnants of it, but I'm not contagious. So if I start coughing, that's why. Um, I then also need to follow that up with, this is not, the, <laughs> this is the worst place for me to be. Not just because um, it's my, my Aunt Bev, um, but I just always thought it difficult to talk about your most intimate moments with someone who mean, means so much to you, to people who you don't know. Um, that being said, I debated and debated, but I felt like Aunt Beverly was like, look now. So here I am, and here I go. Um, Beverly and my mom were like super close, which caused Tracy and I to be super close whether we <laughs> wanted to be or not. <laughs> Tracy is my um, elder cousin and I spent a lot of time over there as well. She um, at our house, a lot of vacations together, a lot of just time. And I, would, I kept thinking back when I thought about what do I say where I can maintain my composure and still give you something of a thought um, or insight into my aunt. Um, first of all, the, it kind of goes Tracy and then me, to be honest with you, because we were so close. Notwithstanding all the other cousins and stuff, but we were just always together. And so there's so many memories. And then uh, Beverly and I are so, um, so similar in so many ways. But there's one memory that kept coming back over and over again. And that's that time when they lived in the green apartment, and that's what I called it, the green apartment, because Everything was painted green in there, especially on Beverly's bedroom with all that uh, safari stuff. But at any rate, we were living in a green apartment, and Tracy and I, as sisters do, bantered back and forth. Tracy had a way, and yeah, I'm going to call you out on it, of teasing me all the time. So, so Tracy... <laughs> Tracy's teasing me. We're going back and forth, and now we're joining on each other. And Tracy says, well, that's why you're a human being. Now, Aunt Beverly had a good old government job, so every five minutes we called Aunt Beverly for every single thing. Sometimes we got fussed at for doing it, and sometimes not. And I was upset. A human being. Like, <laughs> there's no way to go from there. So I called on Beverly, and I'm crying. And I'm like, Tracy called me a human being. And I'm Beverly, instead of being the supportive second mom to me and getting on Tracy like she so often did, she busts out laughing. And I was, we in church, I was mad. I was super mad, but more than mad, I was hurt because I felt like 
how can you do this to me on Beverly? You know, at the time, I obviously didn't know what a human being was. <laughs> and so <laughs> that's what made it so impactful. I packed my bags. I was ready to go home. And there was this little, when you open up the door, there was a, that table, that side table was right there. And that's where I stayed. And every once in a while, Tracy would come back around, you human being. And, and, and I would start crying again. And I was like, I'm going home. As soon as I'm Beverly gets here, she's taking me home. I'm Beverly got in, and she would not take me home for that. And she kept trying to calm me down. Ronnie, Ronnie, you don't understand. Let me explain it to you. And that was the first time that I would say, that I had the most um, teachable moment, not just in the definition of what a human being is, but also in how to navigate my relationship with Tracy because I'm about to had to figure out a way to make sure that things like human being wasn't going to affect her daily work day. I'm Beverly was someone who I often called on once I started working to help me to navigate um, my career and in my dealings with coworkers and stuff like that. Cause she supervised all of these nurses. She used to tell me all the time, I got 30 nurses under my supervision. Never did I ever think one day that I would end up and a nurse and she had a party once and a lot of her people came from her job and it was just so um, so pleasant to see how much people cared for her even though she was their supervisor you know and that's one of the things another life lesson that she taught me was to be humane no matter what, to see people as people and to always try to look for something that you can do to make their life or where, you've, where you are better. That being said, I'm not going to stay because if I stay too long, I'm probably going to start crying. But I just want to close in saying that my life, and I remember even sitting at the table with Miss Bernadine and I'm Beverly, you know, talking and doing whatever. And uh, my life, though, has definitely been impacted and would never be the same. So that was my I'm Beverly. I'll talk. Hello everyone. My name is Danika Stiff. I'm, um, I'm Beverly's great niece. At the last service, I said I was her favorite niece, but it's a lot of y'all in here today, so I know y'all gonna fact check me on that one. But <laughs> um, I'm Beverly. Like everyone said, she loved us. She had a way of you just look at her and you know she loved you, right? There's something that some people can have and some people just don't have it. Just the look of, I know, as soon as he my aunt, I saw love and care and um, tenderness. And we come from a family of seven sisters from Southeast. So to grasp that tenderness, <laughs> um, you know, that was, that was amazing quality that she had, just very tender. Um, I like many, um, attribute my success, a lot of my success to my Aunt Viv. When I was graduating high school, she called me and she said, just come to Salisbury. 
And she didn't tell me that Salisbury was a difficult school to get into. She made it seem like I could just go there and, you know, and I'll be okay. <laughs> um, I was an honor student all the way until I got to Salisbury. And when I got there, I was on academic probation. And I'm like, I definitely set me up. I should have went somewhere else. <laughs> um, but I remember coming to her, um, speaking with her, and her giving me a lot of guidance and support and just pushing me to not quit. And um, that's what I did. I shared a moment with Tracy the other day. I said I had to write a paper on our family, 10-page paper, and I asked Aunt Beverly to help me with it on, say, it was a Tuesday. By Wednesday, she wrote 30 pages. I couldn't even use the 30 pages that she wrote because I'm like, this. <laughs> if I read this 30 pages, I might as well just write the 10 pages myself. <laughs> so, um, But she was just supportive in everything that I wanted to do. Um, when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I stayed with her. And just the love and the support that she gave me through that um, time was amazing and I just want all of my cousins and you know her nieces and great nieces to know that I know that she loved us and I know that she wanted the best for us and I just hope that we can continue on that legacy of being great women um, she was a great woman phenomenal woman um, always put together and just always about her business and I'm a school teacher now so the the word is standing on business on Beverly stood on business all day um and I just love her for that and I appreciate her so much and I just hope that we can all take that legacy and continue on thank you Hey, y'all. <laughs> this is a celebration. Um, I thank y'all so much for coming. Wow, I'm so, I'm so overwhelmed by it. Um, but I want to thank God for uh, covering my journey during this time of transition. I am just uh, overwhelmed with gratitude. Um, the Holy Spirit is truly a friend and a comforter. Um, and to each of you who took time to call and text and send cards or sow a seed or hit the road to Salisbury, my heart is filled because you thought it not robbery to check on me. Um, but we're here to celebrate the Reveverly Ann Johnson. Uh, her siblings call her Beverly, and as you heard, her nieces and nephews call her Aunt Beverly. Uh, old friend may say Bev or Beverly, and then there's me. I just called her Mama or usually that lady. Um, <laughs> and so uh, I ask you to go along with, with me on this. This is my love letter to God. Dear God, thank you for being a God on whom I can depend and wholly lean and trust and love and honor. For even beyond this season, I do not know where I would be without you. I am grateful for your solid word to honor thy mother and father, which grounded me during my season of caretaking. During that time, your word kept me, your mercy renewed me, your grace corrected me. For caring for my mom and going up and down the highways were not considered a sacrifice. It's just an adjustment along my course. <laughs> your word and your comfort covered this walk so much so that I boldly exclaimed, this is not about my will, my power, or my might. They say I'm strong. <laughs> Lord, my response is no. I want you to know what you see before you is the personification of God's love and peace in action. And it's that peace that surpasses understanding. He covered me before I knew I would need it. I've just been holding on. Thank you for a mom who took be not conformed to this world and made it her own journey of evolution. She lived life out loud and abundantly from Vervelverly to Vev, from a young mother to, to forging pathways, from the baby sister to a sister many could look up to, 
whether she wrapped heads in college to offset income um, or to being a business owner of the jeweled elephant. If anyone has known my mother God, they knew she, she knew how to reinvent and elevate herself and did not let anyone or her environment hold her back. Lord, I thank you for a mom who knew how to count it all joy. For you gave me a mother who taught me to lead with love. Those lessons helped me to navigate interactions with humans, no matter the obstacle, which are mostly human. Uh, she kept her intentions honest. That doesn't mean she wasn't hurt or wronged, just that she leaned on to love, to forgive, and have those difficult conversations. Oh God, I'll always cherish the stories she would share and the memories we made from my childhood to now. It would be nothing to find my mom in the kitchen cooking and playing music or just with a random outburst of singing. <clears throat> you must not know about me. You must not know about me. And I would laugh and say, Mom, what you know about that? And that would spark her doing a reenactment of how she was in a singing group growing up and won talent shows across the city back in her day. Oh, yeah, that would include some dance moves that she claimed she still had. God, for a mother who was very much intentional and focused on being an active and engaged mother, for a mother that wanted to expose me to life beyond the great city of Washington, D.C., for a mother that undoubtedly was my biggest cheerleader, how I am so grateful. Even when she would share what felt like my whole life with everyone, everyone. Whether I was running her to the pharmacy or taking her to her appointments or just running into someone she knew, they really could repeat my own life's events back to me. Now, that would turn into, Mama, stop telling my business. And her replying, I'm not telling your business, I'm sharing about my daughter, Vertrice. I'll miss her creativity, her innovation, her intelligence, her fortitude, her love beyond measure for family and friends. My whole life is full of memories of my mama. God, I'm grateful for how you loved my mother, for that's the love she shared with me. And I knew she loved me not by only words, but her actions. Lord, my mom poured so, so much into many and would willingly give help to anyone in need. You created a great model from which many could glean. You know, God, I've watched my mother toil and sacrifice so she can help others. And I watched how you replenish what she poured. You are an amazing God. I love how you put importance on relationships and lineage. So much of your word and your blessings are generational. I think that's why my mama loved her family so much. No matter the generation she tried to support and be an encouraging sister and aunt, she wanted the best for each one. She tried to be present. Sometimes that was physically, monetarily, or sending me as her proxy. Lord, I pray you fill us with even a little of the same, that those who were here would be called to action in their own bloodlines. Now, God, this is a side note, but can you explain why my mama was always late I mean, habitually late. I mean, God, you know time was just not on her agenda almost ever, whether it was picking me up from school or almost missing flights or being late to her appointments, and then I didn't, you know, cause the hurried frenzy. My mama was late, Lord. But anyway, Father, you give us instruction as believers on how we should mourn. And that will get me through the days and weeks and months ahead. And I will forever miss my mama. I will miss the laughs we shared, the cheers, and even when she would give me the business. I can truly say with confidence that you, my Lord, bless me with a mother who loved me without limits. And finally, God, I offer this. There aren't words to describe just how great you are in all your majesty. You continually provide for me. There just isn't anything that you can't do. Because, Lord, I've seen your work before. So I'll trust you all the more 
because you are, you are the sovereign God. You're bigger than all my problems. In every situation, there is nothing too hard for the sovereign God. This is your curtain call, Mama. Take your bow. Love me. selection. How great is our God. He's a good, good God, isn't he? He's a great, great God. 
Amen. Amen. We have transitioned now to church and we've come to worship the Lord. Is that right? Amen. Thank God for all those beautiful reflections for the family. We love you indeed. Amen. What an expression of love and um, care for one another. I'm here to read uh, the Old Testament, the New Testament. The Old Testament is the book of Isaiah, and we're reading from the NIV version, and I'm Minister Timothy High. I'm going to be reading Isaiah 25, verses 8 through 9, and then we'll move over to the New Testament. And it reads, he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. New Testament, Romans. Strolling to verse 35. And we are there. Who shall separate us from the love of God, of the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered or concerned as sheep or considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the presence nor the future, nor any other powers, neither height nor death, nor any else, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and understanding, and proclamation of his holy word. You may go to your seats. Truly, we give honor to God. And we bless his holy name for the spirit of the Lord is in this place. He is working among his saints. And I want to say to Sister Vertrice, I didn't know your mother personally, but I can surely say that based on all of things I've heard and particularly the things that you shared this morning, your letter, truly the Lord worked in her life and blessed her to be a blessing to her family and to so many others. And it's my privilege to offer this prayer in her honor. Our Lord God, you made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Clearly nothing is too difficult for you. A few of us have gathered in this place today to celebrate, to celebrate the life of your daughter, Beverly, a mother, an aunt, a dearly beloved friend, and all the other roles that she played as you allowed her to sojourn here. For you have said to us all that we're just pilgrims and strangers here, that our citizenship is in heaven. And I thank you, Lord God, that based on all that your spirit has shared through the people who knew her best, that surely she is among that great cloud of witnesses, among the saints of the most high God who surround your throne and who cry out to you, holy, holy, 
Holy is the Lord God of hosts. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you did in her life from the time she drew her first breath on the earth till the time she drew her last and stepped into eternity. And we believe that like all those who have gone before to be absent from the body is indeed to be present with the Lord. I glorify you, Lord, with her family and with her daughter, Vertrice, for all the many blessings that you poured into her life and that you made her a channel of blessing, pouring blessings into the lives of others. And truly, that's what you've called all of us to do. And we take a lesson from hearing even now, even this very day, of how you blessed her and how she worked for your glory. How her extraordinary personality drew many and that she didn't know strangers, but she welcomed others and listened to others and poured into others the things that you poured into her. Father, that's what we all desire. And I ask, Father, that your blessings would flow all the more through this family, that many of them, that all of them indeed, will become, become channels of blessing in her honor and because of the goodness of Jesus Christ. As one body we are gathering, yes, with this family, but as one body in Christ we've gathered today to celebrate our Savior, to thank you, Lord, for saving us, calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light, not because of any goodness in us and not that we've done so all good things since you saved us, but your grace has been showered upon us, so full, so free. We can't thank you enough for that. Thank you for you for forgiving all the sins that we've committed. But thank you for using us in spite of us to make a difference, to tell somebody else about the love of the Lord. We thank you that our sister Veb gave us such a clear example of what it does to put our faith in you, to endure the obstacles, the trials of life, which we know she did, even as we heard retreats talk about taking her to physician's visits, and we don't know it all, but we do know who was with her every step of the way. We do know who lifted her bowed down head. We do know who dried her tears. We do know who encouraged her soul. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. And we are so grateful for all that you have done, for all that you're now doing, encouraging this family. That they too will journey on that they too will rejoice in the Lord and in the power of his might, that they too will tell somebody else that God is good. I heard, but God is good. I feel her absence, but God is good. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but God is good. And we bless you, God. Oh, we glorify your name with every ounce of strength that they have, God, and all the strength that you will yet impart to them, God. Let them know that your eye is upon the sparrow. Hallelujah, and that you're watching over them all the days of their life through deep valleys and high, over high mountains, you will be there. And we give you praise for it in advance, that their legacy in part impacted by them, but a legacy that they yet are building themselves will be a one of blessing as well. 
for you have ordained it to be the case. And by your spirit it shall be. And for the glory of Jesus, your son, we say amen. Amen. Come on and give God glory, saints. Come on and lift him higher in this place. Come on and bless Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And the people of God said, Amen. Blessed is the life that has sent Jesus at the center, at its center, center of its joys, center of its sorrows, center of its triumphs, center of its tragedies. When Christ is in the center, we become more than conquerors. We can celebrate him even in the midst of our sorrow. But he's the center of it all. Well, we're grateful for all who have contributed to our celebration today. All of the reflections, all of the memories, all of the words of encouragement, all of the scriptures, all of the songs, everything that has been offered, the prayer, everything that has been offered today has helped us to value all the more and appreciate this precious gift that God blessed we human beings with. <laughs> Amen. You know, the service down in Salisbury was so special. I thank the Lord that I was able to make it along with others from here. It was just a wonderful mood and spirit and atmosphere. And each of the reflections there were also very insightful and instructive for those who did not have a chance to know death. But just to hear the witness from their hearts. And I think many of those were more even impromptu. They were just offered on the spot. And the beautiful music there also so this has been this act two i pray has been a blessing to you you've designed it and the lord has honored it i believe it's been a wonderful tribute to your mother and we praise god for it i'm going to draw our attention to a familiar passage of scripture found in the old testament proverbs chapter 31 it's lengthy in its reading but I don't intend to be long in my standing. Though there are a number of things that we want to try to share. From the Christian Standard Bible, Proverbs 31, beginning at verse number 10, reads like this. Who can find a wife of noble character? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will not lack anything. She rewards him with good and not evil all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and portions for her female servants. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees that her profits are good and her lamp never goes out at night. She extends her hands to the spinning staff and her hands hold the spindle. Her hands reach out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all in her household are doubly clothed. She makes her own bed coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates where he sits among the elders of the land. She makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to his merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing and she can laugh at the time to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. 
Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give her the reward of her labor and her works praise her, let her works praise her in the city gates. You may be seated. We pray that the Lord will bless the reading, hearing, application, proclamation of his word. I want to talk today from this question and from these passages, these verses. Who's that lady? Subtitled, Simply Incredible. Who's that lady? Simply Incredible. Father, thank you very much for blessing us to gather together today in this second installment of celebrating this uniquely blessed life. We thank you for all who you've used to help us to honor you as we celebrate them. Now we pray that you would continue ministering, you would continue speaking, even in this moment of proclamation, that your will will be fulfilled, not only in this moment, but as a result of this moment in our lives as we go forward. It's in the strong, majestic, and mighty name of your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. As we heard those wonderful expressions from Vertrice today, as she began, she said that she calls her mama or that lady. And so when I heard that, that triggered a change, an augmentation to the title of the message. The message was going to be simply incredible. But when she said, that lady, I said, hmm, let's go with who's that lady? Because the truth be told, many times these verses are read because of all of these rare qualities in combination in this one person. Many people I've heard say, who in the world is that? Who can be that lady? You know, that won't, there's nobody who in real life who has all of that going on. So who's that lady? And I want to suggest today that God is able to, to fuse together all types of qualities where he can be glorified in one single life any way that he chooses to. And as we've read through, God had given me a series of qualities to highlight about her life from what I recalled from the Salisbury Act and then as I read through it afresh, sitting here, I was encouraged at the number of, of qualities that I plan to touch on that are right there screaming at you right in, in, the, in the document that you have. So I was feeling pretty much affirmed that the Lord wanted me to go in this direction. Who's that lady? Now there's a song that was recorded many, many years ago, and it's been recorded by several different artist and it's simply entitled the in crowd it says i'm in with the in crowd i go where the in crowd goes i'm in with the in crowd i know what the in crowd knows what i want to suggest today and you'll, you'll pick up on this with this series of qualities that i outlined today that we're saying that sister Verbeverly was in the in crowd and it's a crowd that you want to be in it's a crowd I want to be in this 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 unique lady is in the in crowd because she she's blessed with a number of very unique qualities that is rare to find all resident in one human being and so I'm going to share them I'm not going to be before you long even though it's a long list but I'm going to walk through them because many of these things have already been said today and I'm just going to touch on them. 
as we celebrate the woman who's described in Proverbs 31 and the woman that we've come to celebrate today. So what does it mean for Viv to be in the in crowd? What does it mean for her to be incredible, simply incredible? She's simply incredible because of this vast combination of, of traits. The first one I want to mention today that's true for the woman in Proverbs 31, that's true for, for Viv, and that is she's intelligent. She, she's intelligent. She, she, was, she was prepared by her parents and prepared through the academies to study and to learn and to share wisdom that we see evidenced even in her daughter's life today. She, she is an intelligent woman, and so she's in the in crowd with intelligence. She is independent. And she was a woman who was able to demonstrate that I can do all things as long as the Lord aids me in doing it. I, can, I don't have to be fully dependent upon other people. I can be independent. And there's a degree to which we can find independence through our interdependence upon the Lord. Because with him on our side, we can stand even when it seems sometimes we have to stand alone. But she is also intentional. So we want to celebrate the fact that she did what she did. She was very intentional in her parenting. She was very intentional in her progression with her career. She was very intentional in her role in the community. She's in the in crowd. She was intelligent, independent, intentional, and innovative, as we've heard referenced several times today. She was innovative, came up with fresh ideas, fresh policies, fresh approaches to life and to law. So we thank the Lord that she was in the in crowd. We thank God that he is able to share some of his ingenuity with us and that we're able to in, in some ways manifest that. And so she was innovative in the way in which she did her work in the way that she did her shaping of her daughter's life, taking her to the museums when she was young, allowing that to, to make an impression upon her, allowing that to influence her just being in the atmosphere, just being in the space, just being exposed to those things and watching those things over time have a long-standing impact upon her life. She also exposed her to a man named Jesus who, and that impact is still going to carry on many years to come. And so we thank God that she's in the in crowd, intelligent, independent, intentional, innovative. She was, she was invigorated. She was not somebody who let grass grow up under her feet. She was somebody who was invigorated. She had energy. She was energized. From She was self-motivated. She, she didn't need somebody to push her, didn't need somebody to prod her. She was invigorated already. And we thank the Lord for people like that who already have it in them to do. As we heard about the woman in Proverbs 31, her light didn't go out at night. She was always busy doing something that would be good for her family, good for the needy, good for the poor, good for the community. She was invigorated and she was industrious. She was not afraid of work. There's some people who are afraid of the four letter word W-O-R-K, but sometimes people are going to miss their blessing because it comes dressed up as W-O-R-K. Your, your blessing is there, but, but you don't want work. So you miss your blessing because it was disguised in work. And so God wants us to know that this woman was not afraid of work. No matter how it came, she was willing to put her hand to the spindle. She was putting, put her hand to the plow so that her family, her daughter was needs were met, so that her, her community needs were met. She was a woman who was industrious and, and not only innovative, but she followed up with her innovation. Some people have a good ideas, but they don't have the work ethic to follow up with the good idea, to bring the good idea to reality. But we thank the Lord that this woman that we celebrate today was intelligent, independent, intentional, innovative. She was invigorated. She was industrious. And she was invested. She was invested in her daughter's life. She was invested in the community, invested in the local church. She was invested. And how do you know that she was invested? Because she was involved. You can't be in invested and, and be claimed to be invested and be uninvolved but she was involved in the community things she was involved in the school matters she was involved in her, the shaping of her daughter's 
character, shaping of her daughter's life and values and career. And we thank the Lord for this woman in Proverbs 31 who was involved because she was invested. And that's what we celebrate today, a woman who was invested in her niece's lives, her nephew's lives. She was invested in them. And they come today to share testimony and share witness about a woman who invested in me, as one said, as if I was her own son but I, I was her nephew. We thank God for that kind of investment. She was invested, she was involved, she was an intercessor. She, uh, the word that's in the, in the document that you hold uses the word advocate, but she was an intercessor. She interceded on behalf of many who could not intercede, could not speak for themselves, could not stand for themselves. She was an interceder, intercessor. And we thank the Lord that she was in the in crowd as an intercessor, as one who understood the power of prayer, the power of going before God, calling upon God to release his resources, to release his power, to release his grace upon her family and upon those in need. We celebrate a woman who is rare to have all of these unique qualities embedded in this one life. But she was in the in crowd and we come to celebrate her and the qualities that are in Proverbs 31, 10 through 31 are these very same qualities in this woman who was an intercessor, interceded. She was also invested. She was also involved. She was also infectious. She had a laugh that was infectious. She had a spirit, had a, a word of encouragement, a way of encouragement that was infectious. Other people caught it. It was contagious. And we thank the Lord for that infectious laugh and that infectious personality. She, she had inspiration. She was inspired. Much of what she did and much of what she said, how she went about doing it, was a result of a wind that was blown into her. We call that wind the Holy Spirit. That there was an inspiration that causes us to do more than we might have otherwise ordinarily been able to do. But we thank God for the power of the inspired presence of God through the Holy Ghost. And we thank the Lord that he causes us to love our enemies causes us to do things that we might not otherwise do, to go when we feel like quitting, to stand when we feel like sitting. The Holy Spirit helps us to go on and do what we've got to do. And the reason that she had all of these qualities together that I want to suggest is because she was in Christ. When, when you're in the in crowd and you're in Christ, you get all of that together. You get the intelligence, the independence, the in, intentional in intentionality, you get the innovation, you get all of those things in a package because Christ ultimately represents all of those things. Nobody was ever more independent than he, no one more intelligent than he, no one more intentional in what they came on earth to do than he, no one, no one more innovative than Jesus, no one more invigorated or more industrious than Jesus. Nobody was, has ever been more invested or involved than Jesus Christ. No one has ever been more of an intercessor than the Lord Jesus Christ on behalf of people. He, he's been, nobody has had a love that's been more infectious than that of Jesus. And nobody's been more inspired. He's the one who said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. He's anointed me to share the good news. He's anointed me. I'm inspired. I'm led by the spirit. I'm guided by the spirit. And so we thank the Lord that this woman, when somebody has all of these qualities together, you say they're simply incredible. Then the only way we can be simply incredible is to be saved in Christ. And so we celebrate a woman who is saved and that lets us know that her life has not ended here on it. Her journey on earth may have ended, but her life has not ended because in Christ, her life is infinite. And we thank the Lord that her life continues on beyond the grave, beyond the casket, beyond the, the act one, beyond act two. We recognize that there's going to be an act three, and that's when we all come together around God's throne and celebrate him. And, and celebrate the one who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who makes simply incredible possible. He is the one, the only Jesus, the Lord Jesus the Christ. So she knows that we, and I believe I heard it shared in Vertrice's testimony, that you can't celebrate her, you can't celebrate others without celebrating Jesus. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? 
But Paul said it like this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so Vertrice will go on. These nieces and nephews will be able to go on. Aunt, her sisters will be able to go on. Friends and coworkers will be able to go on all because of the availability to Jesus Christ. He makes himself available to all of us. The same Christ that made her incredible, the same Christ that made her invincible, the same Christ that makes her invaluable is available to each one of us today. And we want to offer him to everyone here, to everyone online. If you've never launched, if you've never started a journey with Jesus, we invite you to start that journey today. Today could be the start of your new journey. It could be the best day of the rest of your life because there's not, nothing like a relationship with Jesus. I know Coca-Cola thinks that, that things go better with Coke, but the reality is that things go better with Jesus. Even trouble goes better with Jesus. Trials go better with Jesus. We can't avoid them. They're going to come, but they go better with Jesus. Amen. Can I get a witness? Can we celebrate this incredible woman of God? When we say, who's that lady? We know that lady is Vervelvery today. That's who we're talking about today. Sister Vev, she's that lady. She fits all of these qualifications, all of these descriptions, all because she's in Christ and Christ was in her doing the work of helping and blessing the lives of other people. So we thank God that we know who that lady is. But we don't know exactly who Solomon was talking about. He may have been talking about his mom, I don't know. But he describes a woman that we were blessed to come to know who has some very unique qualities all fused together, all blended together. And this young lady was the beneficiary of, of living under all of that. And it's no wonder that she is as, as innovative and, and intelligent and as an intercessor as she is, all these qualities we see resident in her daughter. And we praise the Lord for that. We thank the God for, her, for your father coming and sharing those words of encouragement and testimony and witness to us today. So we're going to sign off with the message. Pray that that was in some way a help to us. I hope that we can all bear witness to it. So the Lord wants us now to, as was prayed in that powerful prayer, to carry on the legacy. It's one thing to acknowledge it and to celebrate it and applaud it, but it's not fully a legacy until somebody picks up the baton and runs with it. So somebody here today has to say, that's me. I'll carry that baton of some of those qualities that my sister demonstrated and that I benefited from. Don't let it stop with my generation. Let me pass it on to the next generation. Amen. Thank you, Music Ministry, for coming and blessing us with total praise and blessing us just with your presence alone. It means the world, I'm sure, to Vitrice. Some of your trustees, team members, I'm sure, are here. And uh, some of the um, persons that you've been on mission field with are here. And I'm sure if they're not present, that they're streaming. So we love all that you have done to contribute to the life of who People's Community Baptist Church is. Our commitment, our vow is that we'll be with you beyond Act 2. We'll be with you as you continue your journey. And um, you can count on that. Amen. All right, is there one here today before we close out? We do want to give that opportunity for you to make it known that I want to start a relationship with Jesus. I want, I, I, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to know Viv. This may be what someone is saying. I'm glad that I had the opportunity to know Viv Beverly, but I need to know Jesus. That's what I'm hearing today. I really need to know him that she was really providing a channel through which he, Jesus was expressing himself, his love for me, his grace towards me, his concern for me was being seen through her life. And so I really want him. So if you're here today and you want a relationship with Jesus, you want to start that relationship today, we invite you to come on this day, April the 4th, 2024, and say yes to the Lord profess that you believe that he is the Bible says if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead which we celebrated this past Sunday the Bible says you shall be saved so it's not it's no guesswork it will happen it will happen in an instant 
if there is one. All right. But we don't want to overlook that opportunity to extend the invitation. All right, we're going to go and enjoy more time together if you have time, and that is time over a meal. We found in the scriptures that a lot a lot of communi community activity took place around a meal, and we're going to follow that pattern. In our culture as a people of color, people of African descent, we've discovered early on in our lives that we always would eat together around big, big events. And if you've ever had a chance to go to Africa, um, whether on a mission trip or just on a visit, I'm sure you'll see that cultural reality there too, where everybody gets together and eats a lot of food prepared. One of the things that they do there that I don't do much here, and that's everybody grabs out of the same, same, same bowl together. I'm not, I wasn't really into that part of going back to Africa. So once I saw it the first time, then what I realized that the next meal, I got to be first. So we're going to go up and we're going to eat together. We thank the Lord for our culinary team that's been working up there while we've been worshiping down here. Thank you, ushers, for serving. Thank you, sound ministry, audio-visual ministry. Thank you all for helping to make this possible. All of the administrative support that assisted. Thank you, Minister Yvonne Davis Robinson, who walked along with Vertrice in, in making the preparations. Thank you. She's part of a two-person per, two team. Minister High and Minister Yvonne Davis Robinson are what we call our ministers of family life. They assist all of our families when they have to make these kind of preparations, go through this kind of journey. They offer the comfort, they offer the scripture, they offer guidance in designing the service. So I thank them for, for what they offer. Let's prepare to go down. Um, my wife is here. I want to thank the Lord that she's been able to join us today. Let's stand and seek God's blessing upon our departure. Let's see, Tim has already read scripture. Jodine has already offered prayer. Deacon Edwards has already blessed us with his with his wisdom and we always love to hear her speak he creates such wonderful word pictures for us the acorn and the tree many people remember today so we'll go down remembering the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree or the apple if you'll join me out here we'll, we'll lead the family out. Choir is ready to sing a familiar song. Soon and very soon we're going to see the King. All right, let's receive this closing prayer benediction. Father, we thank you that you've met us here. We thank you that you've ministered to us here. And we thank you, Lord, that you've promised to cover us as we go from here. Whether we go straight to the Norwood Center or whether we go straight to our cars, we're trusting that we go with your covering. We offer now that the blessing that we draw from Scripture. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and bless you with his peace. Lord, we ask your blessing as well upon the food that's been prepared that it will give nourishment to our bodies. Bless the fellowship and the conversation around the tables. May it give strength to this entire family and all of these friends. We pray all of this in the blessed name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Soon and very soon. We are going soon and very soon. We're going, we are going to see the King. soon and very soon. We're going. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to see the King. No more cry.